Hello, my name is Keith Rucker, and uh, today we got another addition in the series of videos we've been working on on, on making the, the cast iron, a new cast iron pulley for a J.A. Vance matcher uh, that I'm working on restoring for the Georgia Museum of Agriculture here in Tiffin, Georgia. This project uh, has been going on for a while now. Uh, I guess we started on the pattern back in, in the winter. I guess it was January or February. Uh, I had to look back on my videos to see exactly when I posted the first one when we started working on this pattern, but uh, it has been a while and uh, hopefully we're going to get able to get back on this. Bear in mind, you know, I, this is, I'm a hobbyist. This is not my full-time job. I'm not a full-time machinist or pattern maker or anything like that. This is kind of my my vent, my relief, I guess, uh, to, to just enjoy life. So, um, it, you know, I, I just get to work on this stuff when I have time. And, and quite honestly, over the last couple of months, we've had a lot going on. And uh, my wife and I just recently uh, purchased a new home, and we've been trying to get moved in. And uh, as a result, just haven't had a whole lot of spare time to, to work on this project. But uh, we did send the patterns off the Cattail Foundry, which is a little Amish foundry up in um, uh, Ohio, I think is where it's at. I'm trying to remember. But, Anyway, they, they specialize in doing little small one-off casting parts and have done a lot of casting for me over the years. Um, but back probably a month or so ago, we got a package back in the mail from them and, and received the, the casting. And you can see here are the two uh, castings that were made from the pattern uh, that we sent them. And uh, you can watch the previous videos on how we did that and how that all worked out there. But, Anyway, we got the, 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 the castings back. Uh, they came back very nice, uh, good finish on them, cast iron all the way around. Uh, we purposely uh, made our patterns so that we had plenty of extra meat on these to, to machine them down. Uh, and I'm always, you know, the if, if you look at the old pattern making books, they say leave about an eighth of an inch of finish on there. I tend to, uh, when I'm doing these, to, to put a little bit more than that just because I'm, I'm cautious and I guess I, I don't have an MBA looking at my books trying to keep my cost down. So I'd rather have a little bit extra meat on these things than what I need. And yeah, it may take me just a little bit extra time machining them out as well, but uh, I have had tried to cut corners before and come back just a little bit too thin or the, the pattern be a little bit wobbly or whatever, not clean up completely. So uh, we got plenty of meat on these and uh, it looks very good like these are going to be uh, work out very good for us. On these patterns, um, or on these castings, we actually have a hole all the way through them. And um, let's see, you know, we, we talked previously about the core box that was used that would, would go inside the, the pattern that uh, after they cast it, they would take that sand out so you'd have these holes in there. And that's, that saves some time in the machining that we don't have a solid cast. And it also saves a little bit of money, but we've already got that hole there, so we're not going to have to bore a hole or drill a hole to get started. But uh, I don't know if you can see it on the video or not, but those the hole is not perfectly round. It's kind of oblong or whatever, but it is undersized. So the first step in getting these things ready is we're going to mount these in the lathe, and we're just going to use a boring bar and get that hole bored out to the correct size. All right, what we have here that we're going to be working on is a 16-inch uh, Lodge and Shipley Model X uh, metal lathe. This is a really nice uh, machine that's out here at the museum that I use quite a bit. Uh, it's, it's an old lathe. I'm guessing probably made uh, late 40s, early 1950s, somewhere along in there. Um, and the museum acquired this lathe many years ago off of uh, government surplus. Uh, based on a little bit of history I've been able to find is uh, Looks like it, it probably came out of a shipyard. Uh, there's some tags on here related to that. I um, can't remember exactly where, but anyway, it came out of a shipyard somewhere up uh, in Virginia, I believe. And um, anyway, we acquired this, and it's been on the museum's hat now for probably close to 30 years. And it's actually seen pretty very little use over the years. It's a pretty tight machine, uh, does a real good job, uh, paints a little rough on it, but man, it's, it's a solid performer. Uh, plan is here is we're just going to put this in the three jaw chuck, uh, chuck it up in there and hopefully that's going to hold it good enough and we can get it centered up uh, well enough to be able to, to start boring that. Uh, depending on how much run out there is when I put it in there I may decide to switch over to a four jaw chuck where we can get this thing running a little bit more true but we're going to start out with the three jaw chuck. I need to uh, flip these uh, the, the teeth and the, and the vise over a little uh, so we can get the right size to fit on here. So we'll go ahead and get started on that real quick. 
For a rough cast, and I think that's a, the run out on that is acceptable. We got plenty of material on here that that we can cut off uh, and remove and get that trued up. So we're gonna we're gonna let it run with there, and we'll start uh, we'll start boring this piece out. Recording. There we go. All right. So to bore this out, we're gonna use a boring bar setup, uh, kind of like this right here. Um, the boring bar I have in here right now, though, is not long enough to go the entire depth of this part. So I've actually got a longer boring bar. Uh, it's a little bit larger diameter. I've already checked this out in the in the cord out hole that's in the casting, and uh, it looks like it's going to clear just fine without having to do any drilling or making that hole larger to start with, which is good. Uh, so we're just going to swap this out in this uh, tool holder here, and uh, we'll be ready to get started. This is uh, just using the carbide insert. Um, on this particular boring bar. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the lathe on uh, just at a low RPM. I'm going to just feed this through here and make sure that basically we're clearing the entire part without getting any contact. And then I can find in there um, where we're starting to get some contact and I'll be where we start boring now. So we'll fire the machine up and go from here. running at about 136 RPMs right now. We're going to start here. I think I can run this a good bit faster, but uh, particularly with that rough casting getting started, I want to start off just a little kind of slow and ease my way into it. Feed this in until we just start to get some contact. cut on the inside of there right now and until we get that thing cleaned up uh, and, and pretty well 
cutting all the way through the bore. I, I'm just going to take it slow and easy. Uh, I'm not in a hurry. I'm not on the clock, so uh, I, I have the luxury to do that. We've made a couple of passes now with the boring bar and um, the hole's not completely cleaned up but I at least got it round enough now that I can get a measurement in there and see where we're at. So uh, what I'm going to use is just one of these little uh, telescoping snap gauges that uh, I put down inside that bore and uh, just kind of get a rough idea of where we're at. I know that uh, the shaft that, we're, that, that this is going to fit onto is an inch and seven sixteenths. Uh, which comes out to 1.4375. Uh, so, like I said, we're just going to see where we're at now. So, I'm going to snap this down, put it in here, pull it out, and um, this is by no means anywhere close to being right, but I just like to know where I'm at. Uh, so, now using the uh, dial calipers, or excuse me, the micrometer. Looks like we're at 1.241, so just a little under an inch and a quarter. All right, we've sped up the speed a little bit on this now. We're running at 295 RPMs, which was uh, about half again as fast as we were on the last pass. And this seems to be cutting good, sounds good. And uh, we're down right now to only about 100 thousandths left to cut. I'm still cutting about uh, 40 thousandths per pass right now. Okay, I think we're about right here. Um, I just made what I hope is going to be my, my last pass through here, uh, sneaking up on that final dimension. Uh, again, inch and seven sixteenths, which is uh, 1.4375. Uh, it's be the size of the shaft that'll be going through here. So again, I got my uh, uh, telescoping snap gauge here, and I'm just going to stick this down in here and get a good measurement. I'll just put that in there, get it kind of tight, and I'll, I, I will bend it forward just a little bit, get it tight, tighten it up, and just kind of pull it through, and that will get that uh, dimension just right. And then uh, using my using the micrometer, I'm at one inch for three, about eight five. Uh, roughly. This one doesn't measure to the ten thousandth, but it's about halfway in between there. So I'm about a thousandth of an inch over uh, the size of the shaft that's going in there, which is really uh, right where I want to be. But uh, now I want to verify that. So I actually have a piece of shafting. Uh, it's a piece of the same shafting that those shafts are made out of. We're going to put that in there and see how it fits. So here's just a little short piece of that shafting. And Yeah, that's a nice fit. I'm very happy with that. You know, we've got just a little bit of play in there, but not hardly any at all. That's a, that's going to work out just great, I think. So, um, 
inside bore is good now. I'm gonna try to go ahead while I got this, the boring bar, I'm gonna try to clean up this inside diameter. I need to measure the old one and kind of see what that was because I believe that actually goes down over a, uh, a flange uh, or bearing actually goes up in there. It can go up in there to give a little more travel. So we need to make sure that that's right. Uh, one thing I will note here is if you notice, you know, we had a little bit of run out on the outside of the part, but if you're watching in the video, the inside diameter was actually running very true. And I didn't mention that when I was setting this up, but I was really kind of watching that inside diameter uh, because I knew that cord that we put in there uh, that goes all the way through was, was more or less in line with this inside diameter. I got plenty of meat on here that I can cut off uh, to get my final dimension. So I wasn't worried about having to cut some out there, but I actually had a little bit less uh, meat that I could uh, play with on the inside. So I was paying more close attention to getting this inside running true uh, with the hopes of that whole shaft going through the part would be running true as well and I'd have plenty of meat on the inside. So this is pretty much like I said, we're gonna clean up this inside part here. Uh, and then from there, uh, I'm gonna make a mandrel that, that will turn between centers that we can mount this on. And uh, we'll then actually turn the outside of this. And uh, because this is a contour on here, uh, this lathe that I've got here really is not set up to, to cut that kind of a profile all the way through. So I'm gonna be uh, probably sh shopping out where I send this to to actually cut that. And I got basically two options. Uh, uh, probably the first one that comes most people might be sent it to a modern CNC shop. And that's definitely an option. Uh, but even if you're running an old school machine, old school lathe, uh, they actually have a, a tracing attachment on some of these older models that are hooked up to us. It has a stylus that follows a pattern that is, uh, goes to a tool holder on a hydraulic ram. And you can actually do this by having, uh, by cutting out this, this profile that you want to cut. Uh, on one of those a uh, lathe like that and uh, I'm not sure which direction we're gonna go on that yet I got to contact some folks to see uh, what we can do but hopefully we'll be able to get some video uh, showing that as well but right now we're just getting it ready to go to that next step here on the inside with the inside bore as well as uh, machining out this inside surface here. 